Buying a wedding dress is a rite of passage. It's something that most little girls dream of, and when the big day arrives, it is totally exciting, totally amazing. But the question then comes up, after the wedding's over, what do you do with the dress? I know that some people have it carefully preserved, and they store it for years and years, hoping that one day their children or grandchildren want to use it. But in our culture right now, that doesn't happen very often. Most women want to go out and buy their own dress. And those dresses just never really get used again. There is also trying to repurpose the dress. I know sometimes people say, well, it was a wedding dress, but now it could be a prom dress or it could be you know, something else. And so they want to change it up a bit, maybe dye it. So that is what we are going to talk about today. It is repurposing and dyeing a wedding dress. Gather around for story time. I'm about to share something with you. When I was about 20 years old, I went with a friend to buy her wedding dress. It was incredibly expensive and she was incredibly young and had no money. I think she was just 18. And she had her mother and her grandmother pay for the dress, they, which they agreed to. And then a year later, after her wedding, she was uh, in a haunted house. And so she completely destroyed this wedding dress to play the corpse bride. And I remember her mother and her grandmother at separate times coming up to me and saying, I cannot believe she did that. She, what a stupid thing to do. And at the time I remember shrugging it off and thinking, it's her dress, she can do whatever she wants. And she was never gonna wear it again, so why not? As an adult, <laughs> I can really sympathize with those women who had paid possibly thousands of dollars definitely hundreds of dollars for that dress and then watched it a year later be streaked with fake blood and ripped up and torn up. I could definitely see their side of it, but I see her side too. And she had a great time being in the haunted house and now she doesn't have to worry about storing that wedding dress because I'm pretty sure she just threw it in the trash after that. That's my homespun story. Hope you enjoyed it. When you buy a wedding dress, everything has been dyed and then assembled so that everything matches and everything's the perfect shade. But when you're dyeing a wedding dress, you have to think about some things like what kinds of different fibers and different fabrics have been used because each of those things can react differently to the dye. And the results can be a little messy and sometimes disappointing. I recently bought a dress from JJ's house and I thought that I had ordered it in a champagne color because I wanted to use it for some portraits afterwards, but I accidentally ordered it in white. So it, a white dress like that is a white dress. It looks like a wedding dress, and that's really all that I feel like you can use it for. But the cost of returning it was a little bit more than I was willing to pay, and I thought for the same price, I could take it to a professional shop and have it dyed. So that's what I'm going to do. I have called a place in town, and for $40, they are going to dye the dress for me and try to get it as close to a champagne color as possible. The reason I'm not going to do this myself <laughs> is because I actually have quite a bit of experience with dyeing clothes. My family and I did, you know, cosplay stuff, so I've, I've dyed lots of things on my own. And I don't have the space, I don't have the large tub that would be required and the ability to heat those huge amounts of water or a place to hang it. I just, I'm not set up for it right now. But also, I, I want to trust somebody else who has more experience specifically with wedding gowns. I want to show you quickly what can happen if you have a mixture of fabrics and how they can react differently to the dye. So a few years ago, I did a steampunk themed family portrait session and I wanted my daughter to look like a little Victorian street urchin. Rather than making it, I was just looking for a dress that was similar to the style. And in the 1970s and 1980s, Victorian style was making a comeback. So I managed to find a vintage first communion dress and I dyed it purple. This dress was all white and each different kind of fabric pulled something different from the dye. So this was light purple, this was dark purple, light purple, this lace pulled blue, this lace pulled red. Each of these pulled differently. You know, I loved the overall effect. I thought that it looked really interesting and really pretty and my daughter loved it. And after I had dyed it, I put some black acrylic paint in a bathtub and let, it was a little bit chunky in there and I rolled the dress around in it so that it looks soot stained since she was an urchin. And the dress worked out great, but this was a big lesson in why you have to be careful dyeing things. 
So if you have a wedding dress with lots of different things like lace and sequins and you know, crinoline, tulle, satin, you have to be careful because each of those fabrics is going to pull from the dye differently. One thing they warned me about at the bridal shop was to handle the dress as little as possible. And I told them I'd only tried it on once, but they said the more that you wear satin, it will pull oils from your skin and that can really have a negative impact on the dye. It can be blotchy and it can pull darker in those places where the oils have touched the satin and absorbed. So <laughs> I put the dress back in a box with gloves on and I haven't touched it since. Hopefully in two weeks, we're gonna have a dress that is able to be used for something other than a wedding. In addition to dyeing and repurposing your gown, there is something that has become popular called trashing the dress. And I wanted to talk about it for just a second. When you trash the dress, it means that your marriage has ended. And this beautiful dress, which for most women is a symbol, it is a basically a symbol of the life you thought you were gonna have. It can be very painful to look at. And I know there are people out there who would, and I've seen the comments where people go, you know, you shouldn't have trashed that. That was such a waste. You should have sold it. You could have donated it to charity. But there's something very cathartic about destroying this thing. A lot of the women in these situations have been betrayed and they need something to help them move on. When we have somebody who has a lot of hurt, we often tell them, therapists will tell them, write a letter to the person who has hurt you. And after you have written the letter, burn it and let the ashes drift away with all of your anger and just release that. And to me, what is a wedding dress if not a visual reminder? It's, it's a textile love letter and that love is over. So trashing the dress, taking photos can be such a therapeutic way of moving on from that relationship that I fully support trash the dress photography sessions. I think that it can be very helpful to a lot of people and I think that it's a good thing. Having said that, if you are able to donate your dress or you know, give your dress away, that's a good thing too because you're helping somebody else out. But if you need that, if you need to trash the dress to move on, do it and don't you dare feel guilty about it. Okay, so it took about a week before the dress was ready. And then it took me about a week to be able to drive all the way up and pick it up. Um, I, I probably, oof, I don't know if I should say anything. I think we should just get straight to the dress and then talk about it. So let's do that. Let's just try on the dress. This is how the dress turned out. The tool really picked up the color. The lace is still basically white. It is very, very lightly, very lightly ivory. It picked up almost none of the color and the tool picked up all of it. And the underneath satin picked up none. So basically just the tool. Sorry, I didn't want to do this all the way. So that's still open. <laughs> You can see this is still basically white. All of the satin, all of the lace are still white. And the only thing that changed color was the tool. If I'm being very honest with you, I really hate what she did to this dress. And I, I feel so guilty. I don't want to blame her because this is what happens when you dye dresses with mixed fabrics. On the other hand, a professional should know to some degree that this is what's going to happen based on what they're dealing with. And this woman didn't seem to, I mean, it just, it looks nothing like the picture that I sent her. And I really wish she had just said, that's not gonna happen. Don't waste your money, sell the dress and buy what you want. You know, I kind of, and for that reason, I, I just, it doesn't look like what I wanted and I kind of hate it. It's not an ugly dress. It's not an ugly dress at all. I'm just so disappointed that it's not even close and that that woman didn't, I don't want to blame her. I'm sorry. I don't want to blame her. Ugh, it's hard. So if you're going to repurpose a dress, keep that in mind. Please don't have any emotional attachments or any expectations. You get what you get. When I contacted this woman and asked her about dyeing the dress, I sent her a picture of what the dress looked like. I sent her a picture of the dress that I wanted, the color that I wanted the dress to be. And she had no hesitation, no reservations. Just absolutely, I can do that for you. No problem. 
That should have been a red flag. <laughs> um, anybody who's ever dyed clothing would, with, with a fair degree of success would immediately warn you, this may not turn out the way you want it to, and she didn't. So the second thing was that when I went in to drop the dress off, which was only two days later, she had no memory of ever talking to me. She did not have the picture on her phone. She said, oh, I must have deleted it. I just, I talked to so many people and I thought, oh no, how do you know you're gonna get what I want if you don't have the picture that I sent you? But I just decided to trust her and I don't wanna blame her too much because I don't know if it's her or if it's just the way the dress reacted with the dye, but just based on the color of the tool, she used totally the wrong color and she used way too much of it. I think if this is a fail, this is a total fail. And this is the risk that you take when you dye a dress to repurpose it. So I would really recommend if you need a wedding dress repurposed, don't use one that really means something to you because you never know how it's gonna turn out and it might be a disaster like this dress. But since we're on the subject of disasters and fails, I thought it would be fun to do another dress that I got from Etsy. In March, I found a shop on Etsy and I purchased a dress from them and they said that they had a three to five week processing time. One of the things I loved about this dress was that it seemed to be an original. Most of the things I see on Etsy nowadays are not handmade. They are mass produced Chinese goods and they can claim to be handmade because they are being handmade in a sweatshop or a factory, but they're not really handmade. And that is, Etsy's just rampant with it now. I, do, I just, I rarely shop there because of that. Nothing's really made by a small business owner making it themselves by hand. But this shop seemed to have original designs and they were making their own dresses because they had original photos and I didn't see anything like it anywhere else. So I bought a dress from them and it was mm, $250, let's say, with a three to five week processing time. My vacation, I was going to the beach and it was a coral dress and I thought it would look great for some beach photos, it was like seven weeks away. So I thought I'll be cutting it close, but you know, I, it'll get here in time. The seller was awful. <laughs> I sent messages after three weeks. I said, you know, this hasn't shipped. Can you give me an estimate? They said they were on vacation and they would get back to me within a couple days. They didn't. A week later, I sent another message. They said they were um, on weekend vacation. They would get back to me on Monday. They didn't. I sent them a message saying cancel the order. It's not going to get here in time. And then I officially contacted Etsy to cancel the order. And then suddenly they answered my messages and they sent me a picture saying, oh, the dress is ready. No worries. But it doesn't look anything like what the photo looks like. The color was totally wrong. It was brown instead of coral. It looked like it was, you know, bent in some places and they said, do you still want this? We'll wait to hear from you. I immediately answered them back 12 hours later because of the time difference, immediately answered them and said, no, I've already requested a cancellation and this doesn't even look like what you sold me. And they wrote me back a day later and said, oh, sorry, we already shipped it. And I said, okay, well, what can I do about that? Nothing. You just have to be available when DHL comes to refuse it because they didn't require a signature. So I contacted DHL. They said there was nothing they could do. I ended up taping a huge sign to my uh, postage box that said, dear DHL driver, I'm so sorry, but I do not want this package and I put the number on it. And DHL delivered it anyway. I tried to return it. The return process involved a certified letter from them saying that they would fit the bill for the return costs. I mean, it was just a nightmare. It was a total nightmare. I mean, like I had to kind of threaten them a little bit because they're like, oh, we'll send you a refund through PayPal. It'll take about uh, a week. I waited my week and after a week I said I still don't have my refund. I'm just going to file with PayPal and I'm going to file with Etsy. When they were really motivated they got me my refund immediately. So I just I hated the runaround from these people. I don't know why it had to be like this. I didn't feel right about keeping this dress because I'd gotten a refund for it. So I asked them how I could return it to them and they said just hang on to it we'll send you a return address. I've waited six months holding on to this dress just in case they wrote to me and said, here's the return address, send it back to us, because I did not want to keep it. I don't feel like it's mine because I got my refund. But it's been six months, it has been sitting in its DHL package. So today we're gonna open it, we're gonna try it on really quick and do a quick comparison with what I got versus the picture. And maybe the seller isn't as bad as I thought. We'll see. I'm a little bit uh, nervous about opening it because I'm afraid they'll send me a message tomorrow saying, Here's the address, send us our dress back. And I'll go, oh no, I've already opened it. But it's been six months. So.
Okay, I'm gonna flip this inside out. So I, I don't wanna ruin business for these people. I just had a really bad experience. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not a terrible dress. Uh, these are an issue, and I saw this in the photo, that this has got a stiff fabric in it to give it its shape, to help it keep this nice angle. But when you fold it to ship it, it's almost impossible to get this out on your own. You basically have to take it to a professional cleaner to get this back into shape. It has a corset back, which is pretty. It has quite a bit of very delicate beadwork. And this is corset boning here. This is actual corset boning. It has a top layer that is an ombre brown and then um, a gray layer and a yellow layer and then a gray layer of this is a sort of stretchy fabric. It's not a satin, but it's a, this is your opaque layer. This is your lining. So it's a pretty dress. I actually do like it. It's just not at all what I ordered. And it will be beautiful for fall, but I was looking for something coral for the beach. So I don't want to speak badly about that company. I'm going to go ahead and give you their name and tell you that this is a beautiful dress with quality workmanship. I just had a bad time because they did not send me what I ordered and it was basically impossible to stop the shipment or get it back to them. I'm just stuck with it. I'm also going to note that their communication to me was not great. Maybe they actually were on vacation, but it was a, basically a solid seven weeks of not responding to my messages. So keep that in mind. Okay, let's try this dress on. This is the dress and it is very pretty. It actually is a very nice dress. I, hmm. If it's true to size, there are uh, bra cups built into it with support, so you wouldn't need anything more than this, especially, I didn't lace up the corset back because I'm being lazy, but if you had that, you wouldn't need a bra at all. It fits true to size, and it's very lightweight. It's not too long. With heels on, it probably wouldn't drag the floor at all. So this is a nice dress. See, now I feel guilty for calling this dress a fail. It is actually a beautiful dress. There were just issues with the seller, and also it's not what I ordered. I guess it's kind of a fail, but had I wanted to order this dress, I would be very happy with it because it's very pretty. By the way, I will leave the link for the original dress that I intended to order because this one's not on the website. I think it was an accident on uh, the links, you know, the links in the description below. So the question now is, do I get the dress that I actually wanted and actually bought because I really do like that dress or do I just let it go because I don't need a wedding dress and the portrait season is basically over. The colors are going to be changing on the leaves and it's going to be too late before the dress gets here to take fall pictures of this dress. So that's the question. If you have thoughts on it, comment below. I'd love to hear what you think because I cannot make up my mind.